At a technical level, ATSC 3.0 is the most advanced broadcast technology in the world. Some of the advanced standards that make up ATSC 3.0 include layered division multiplexing, low density parity check coding, multiple input, multiple output, and non uniform constellations, among many others. In information theory, there is a theorem known as the Shannon Hartley theorem. Named after its creators, Claude Shannon and Ralph Hartley, the theorem dictates that that there is a theoretical maximum as to how many bits can be sent in a given bandwidth at a given SNR. Constellations which dictate the amplitude and phase of the signal at a given unit of time had always been uniform. However, it was discovered that by utilizing these constellations in a non-uniform fashion, you could send more data at a given SNR or send the same amount of data at a lower SNR. Thus, this technology shrunk the gap between what could be sent with modulation techniques and what could be sent theoretically according to the Shannon Hartley theorem. This innovative technology, which has barely made its way into Wi-Fi, is a part of the suite of technology standards that ATSC 3.0 is made up of. These standards were developed and patented by various entities worldwide. Many of these technologies, known as Standard Essential Patents, or SEPs, were licensed under reasonable and non-discriminatory, or RAND, terms. However, this only applies to patents from members of the ATSC. The broadcast industry didn't want the FCC to get involved, so the only authority mandating RAND rules is the ATSC itself. Unfortunately, the ATSC doesn't have much authority to enforce its own RAND rules, and its own rules are voluntary, which means not every ATSC member has to follow the ATSC's RAND licensing rules. This means there may be patents that make up ATSC 3.0 that are not licensed under RAND rules. RAND is a commitment made by various companies that hold patents to ensure fairness and widespread adoption of their technologies. The vast majority of patents included in ATSC 3.0 are a part of patent pools that seem to be running smoothly like via licensing and Avanchi broadcast. At the end of the day, this makes it easy for a manufacturer to pay for the necessary patents. Unfortunately, not every Every patent is a part of a patent pool. Non-uniform constellations, a fundamental technology to ATSC 3.0 that shrinks the gap to the Shannon limit is one of these technologies. According to the outcome of a lawsuit, LG failed to pay Constellation Designs, Inc. for their patents regarding non-uniform Constellation technology. In the lawsuit, two of the founders from Constellation Designs claimed that they developed a specific aspect of the non-uniform Constellation's technology that happens to be used in ATSC 3.0. They claimed that they developed this in 2007 during their time at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. LG used a real Realtek SOC for tuning and demodulating ATSC 3.0 broadcasts, and that chip was found to be liable for this patent infringement. Even though LG itself didn't manufacture this chip, in patent law, both the manufacturer of a component and the company integrating it into a final product can be held liable for infringement. Oh no! Ultimately, LG was ordered to pay $6.75 for every T TV sold in the past, as well as every TV sold in the future that contains this Realtek SOC. The TV set business has some of the tightest margins in the entire technology industry, with many manufacturers losing money on the sale of a TV in the hopes that onboard advertising and data collection will eventually make it profitable. Although LG itself is heavily invested in ATSC 3.0 with patents of their own, they ultimately decided to cease production of ATSC 3.0 capable TVs, as $6.75 per TV was too hard to swallow. According to an amicus brief filed by Pearl TV, a business organization representing major U.S. broadcast companies, the largest patent pool, Avanchi Broadcast, charges just $2 to $3 for 11,000 patents, including 900 patents that are standard essential patents. Meanwhile, Constellation Designs was awarded $6.75 
designs for just a few standard essential patents. Constellation Designs, in the view of Pearl TV, was awarded way too much money for their patents. The awarded amount to Constellation Designs is staggering, since other patents that are subjectively just as advanced and groundbreaking, or are more advanced and groundbreaking, cost just a few cents each. At first, the results of this lawsuit were downplayed by many members of the broadcast industry. A year has passed, and they have now done a 180. In this same amicus brief, Pearl TV argues that the transition to ATSC 3.0 will, quote, end in futility if consumers are unable to buy ATSC 3.0 equipment, a result of more manufacturers being sued and having to pay what they see is an unfair amount. Interestingly enough, many device manufacturers are still making ATSC 3.0 capable products. Just a handful of days after this amicus brief, Panasonic announced that they were re-entering the U.S. TV market after a 10-year hiatus, and that every 2024 TV they sell will include ATSC 3.0 capabilities. Considering the LG lawsuit happened a year ago, I believe Panasonic would have had time to remove ATSC 3.0 capabilities from their TVs if they felt it threatened their business. Additionally, Zapperbox just announced new Zapperbox M2 and M3 models, further cementing them in the ATSC 3.0 device business and TCL, just a few months back, included ATSC 3.0 capabilities in many higher-end TV models. It's worth noting that many of these device manufacturers may be liable to a lawsuit for patent infringement, like LG. According to a TV Technology article, not a single next-gen TV manufacturer has paid Constellation designs. Oh, no! To make things more confusing, other ATSC 3.0 chip manufacturers may not have used Constellation Design's specific technology in their chips. Ultimately, if all of the ATSC 3.0 receiver manufacturers never paid Constellation Designs and the device manufacturers integrating these chips never paid Constellation Designs either, there could be catastrophic issues for the ATSC 3.0 industry as a whole. What I would argue is the most troubling and could be an impact already starting to show is the lack of new ATSC 3.0 deployments. This is a map from the ATSC showing ATSC 3.0 deployments that were either on the air, readying broadcasts, or announced as a target market as of December 2021. This is the ATSC's most recent map as of the time of recording. If you compare these maps side by side, you'll notice that there are many markets that have simply disappeared from being slated as an ATSC 3.0 market. What instantly stood out to me was the fact that Fort Myers, Florida was slated to get an ATSC 3.0 lighthouse and apparently was already ready in broadcast, and Plattsburgh, New York, Burlington, Vermont market was slated to get an ATSC 3.0 lighthouse as well. These are just a few markets really relatively close to where I live, but there are many other markets around the country that have been taken off the list, and there's a chance you may live in one of these markets. To give you an idea for how little new ATSC 3.0 lighthouses there have been, the last ATSC 3.0 lighthouse went on the air in June, specifically June 18th, a full three months ago, and the lighthouse before that went on the air over a month before that lighthouse in May. There has never been a point in the ATSC 3.0 role out since it began that there has been three months with no new deployments. This slowing of new deployments contradicts the rhetoric from a major broadcaster, specifically Sinclair. In an article written by Gerald Fritz of One Media, a subsidiary of Sinclair, Fritz states that broadcasters need ATSC 3.0 quote-unquote now and that quote, we need a sense of urgency. He also stated four major points on how to achieve this. One of these points was accelerated ATSC 3.0 deployments. Now, Sinclair owns 193 TV stations and only a few dozen are broadcasting in ATSC 3.0 right now. So there's a lot of daylight between that stated goal and reality. If Sinclair really wanted accelerated deployments, they could. There are some regulations, but nothing to prevent mass ATSC 3.0 deployments. In an article written for TV Technology in May of 2024, Brett Jenkins, 
the executive vice president of Nexstar, said it best. He said, quote, There is no reason why the industry or even just markets on a market-by-market -market basis could not decide to move toward that nightlight concept even under today's regulatory framework with the simulcasting mandates and get more 3.0 stations on the air than 1.0. He went on to say that, quote, When the time is right, we can pull those levers to get us further along the transition path. Carrie Osland, the vice president of strategy at the EW Scripps company, said, quote, I happen to be on the future of TV Group 1 committee. Everything Brett said is what we're talking about. My question to broadcasters is where are all of the ATSE 3.0 deployments? You say you need them right now and that we need a sense of urgency, but where are they? It's been three months without a new lighthouse in the US. There are markets that have been taken off the ATSE 3.0 markets list, tons of markets that have never been slated to even transition yet, and the stations that are on the air tend to be riding solo in a market. Yet your industry has outlined ways to speed up deployments even in the current regulatory structure. Now, as mentioned in a previous video, Sinclair is one of the few broadcasters who has not been implementing DRM on their ATSE 3.0 channels. Another point Sinclair mentions in that article is, quote, flooding the market with affordable slash ubiquitous dongles. As I've stated in the past, A3SA DRM certification requires a lot of time and a lot of money, something that is the complete opposite of affordability and flooding the market. This next-gen certification process is really slowing down the rollout of ATSE 3.0 compatible devices. Think about all of those $29 ATSE 1.0 DVRs that you see on Amazon. Something like that will not be possible if a stringent next-gen TV certification is required. I highly doubt many of these pop-up Chinese companies with white-label products are going to go through the headaches of getting certified for this process. The fact that Sinclair is taking this stance and that they haven't been implementing DRM on their own channels is, in my opinion, not a coincidence. In my opinion, ATSE 3.0 has too much momentum behind it to fail. There have been enough deployments, way more than the defunct broadcast technologies in the past, like ATSE Mobile Handheld, that I believe the FCC would get involved to work out patent disputes rather than have the standard simply die out. Keep in mind, ATSE 3.0 is a worldwide standard that was first implemented in South Korea all the way back in 2017. It's very successful over there with many 4K broadcasts on the air. In fact, South Korea has their own version of DR DRM that was implemented way better than how our A3SA DRM was implemented. Additionally, LG, believe it or not, is still producing and selling ATSE 3.0 TVs for the South Korean market. I'll be discussing South Korea's deployments of ATSE 3.0 in a future video. Additionally, Jamaica has already deployed ATSE 3.0 stations with a much better marketing campaign than the US. Trinidad and Tobago is planning on launching ATSE 3.0 broadcasts very soon, and Brazil Brazil, a country with 75% of TV viewership over the air, has essentially chosen ATSE 3.0 as their new broadcast standard after rigorously comparing all other broadcast technologies. ATSE 3.0 is a great broadcast standard. We desperately need ATSE 3.0 and clarity from the FCC on patent disputes as well as on DRM. In fact, I believe the approach on DRM that I outlined in this article is the most fair. But there's been almost 5,000 complaints about DRM to the FCC, yet the FCC has done nothing. Come on, FCC. The 5,000 people writing complaints about DRM aren't paying their taxes to have the FCC sit around and do nothing. It's almost 2025, and the FCC's 2027 decision deadline is fast approaching. The good news is, in the slight chance ATSE 3.0 fails, we've got another standard we could use. 5G broadcast. 5G broadcast. Supporting 5G broadcast. WWOOLD transitioned over to 5G broadcast. 5G broadcast. The door of new freedom.